today we're going to talk about related rates and how to solve those problems that you're going to encounter in calculus. We're going to cover a lot of problems, but before we begin, let's talk about derivatives. Now, what is the derivative with respect to x of y to the third? What would you say? The derivative of y cubed using the power rule is 3y squared. But it's multiplied by dy dx. Likewise, if you differentiate with respect to x, let's say r to the fourth, it's the derivative of r to the fourth, which is 4 r cubed, using the power rule, but times dr over dx. So let's say if you differentiate with respect to y, s to the fifth power. This is going to be equal to 5s to the fourth times ds divided by dy. So notice the pattern. So if you differentiate y with respect to x, you're going to get dy dx. If you differentiate r with respect to x, you'll get dr dx. If you differentiate s, with respect to y, you're going to get ds dy. You need to understand what derivative you're going to get after you differentiate a certain variable with respect to another variable. Now, for example, if we differentiate x cubed with respect to x, it's going to be 3x squared times dx over dx, which simply disappears and it's just 3x squared. Now, what about the derivative of x cubed with respect to y. So for this one, it's 3x squared dx dy. Now for related rate problems, you're going to differentiate the equation with respect to time. So let's say if you differentiate y to the fifth power with respect to time. This is going to be 5y to the fourth times dy dt. So let's say if you have this equation, area is equal to pi r squared. And you wish to find the derivative with respect to time. The derivative of a is simply 1, but times dA dt. The derivative of r squared is 2r. But if you're differentiating r with respect to time, you're going to get dr dt. So now let's work on some problems. Here's the first one. Let's say z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and we have dx dt and dy dt. Find dz dt when x is 8 and y is 15. Now whenever you have a problem, it's good to make a list of what you have and what you don't have. So we have the value of x. We know it's 8, and we have the value of y. We don't have the value of z, but we do have the value of dx dt, that's positive 4, and dy dt is 5. What we're missing is dz dt. So before we can find dz dt, we need to find z first, which we can use this equation to get the answer. So since z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, we can plug it in. Notice that this equation is associated with the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared for right triangles. Now there are certain special triangles that you want to be familiar with. There's the 3, 4, 5 triangle. There is the 7, 24, 25. There is the 5, 12, 13 triangle. And also the 8, 15, 17 triangle. Notice that we have 8 and 15. The third side is 17. So that tells us that z is 17. But you can always use the equation to get the answer. So if you plug it in, it's going to be 8 squared plus 15 squared. 8 squared, that's 64. 15 times 15 is 225. And if you add these two numbers, you should get 289. And the square root of 289 is 17. So z is 17. Now that we have z, what can we do to find dz dt? 
So starting with the same equation, let's use implicit differentiation. Let's differentiate both sides with respect to t. So the derivative of z squared is 2z times dz dt. And the derivative for x squared is 2x times dx dt. And for y squared, 2y dy dt. So if we divide both sides by 2, we could cancel all the 2s. So now let's plug in what we have. z is 17. We're looking for dz dt. x is 8. dx dt is 4. y is 15. And dy dt is 5. 8 times 4 is 32. 15 times 5, that's 75. If you add those two numbers, you should get 107. So the ZDT is 107 divided by 17. So that's about 6.294. So because the ZDT is positive, that means that Z is increasing with respect to time. Round two, find the rate of change of the distance between the origin and a moving point on the graph y equals x squared plus one. So how can we do that? So let's draw a rough sketch. So we have a graph that looks like this. And the point is two comma five, which is probably somewhere over here. Now we want to find the rate of change of the distance between the origin and the moving point. The distance between the origin and the point is represented by this line. If we turn it into a triangle, we could say that this is x, this is y, and the distance between the two points, let's call it z. So therefore we have the equation z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So we want to find the rate of change of the distance between the origin and the moving point. Since z is the distance between the origin and the moving point, we're looking for dz dt. That's what we need to find. Now let's make a list of the information that we already have. We know that x is 2 and y is 5, based on the point 2 comma 5. We currently don't know the value of z. Now, what about the 4 centimeters per second? What variable does that represent? Notice that it's associated with the y-coordinate, and it's a rate. So it's a dy dt. Now, what about dx dt? Do we know the value of dx dt? We're missing that information, too, so we got to find it. So first, let's find z. So using this equation, we know that x is 2 and y is 5. 2 squared is 4. 5 squared is 25. So z squared is 29, which means z is the square root of 29. Now we have the equation y is equal to x squared plus 1. So we can use this equation to find dx dt. If we differentiate both sides with respect to time, we're going to get dy dt is equal to 2x dx dt. dy dt, we know it's equal to 4. We have the value. And we know x is equal to 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. So therefore, we have 4 is equal to 4 times dx dt. So if we divide both sides by 4, dx dt is equal to 1. Now, the only thing that we're missing is dz dt. That's what we're trying to find. Once we get that, we have the answer to the problem. So let's use the original equation, or not the original equation, but this equation. z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And let's differentiate both sides with respect to time. So we did this in the last example. So it's um, 2z dz dt which equals uh, 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt.
So let's get rid of the twos. And now we just got to plug in the information that we have. So z is square root 29. We're looking for a dz dt. x is equal to 2. dx dt is 1. y is 5. And dy dt is 4. So 5 times 4 is 20 plus 2. That's 22. Z prime and dz dt, they're the same. So dz dt is 22 over root 29. And if you want to rationalize the denominator, here's what you could do. You can multiply the top and the bottom by root 29. So you can leave your answer as 22 square root 29 divided by 29. So that's dz dt. Round 3. The radius of a circle is decreasing at a rate of 4 centimeters per minute. How fast is the area and circumference of the circle changing when the radius is 8? So feel free to try these problems and pause the video, work it out, see if you get the answer, and then play the video, check your solutions. The best way to learn these problems is by working uh, through these problems if you want to do well on your tests. Now, how should we begin? It helps if you make a list of the information that you know. We know the radius is 8. Now, what about the 4 centimeters per minute? What does that represent? So that number is associated with the radius, and it's a rate. So that has to be dr dt. Now, notice that dr dt is decreasing. That means that it's negative. If dr dt is negative, that means the radius of the circle is getting smaller and smaller. Now we need to find dA dt. That's how fast the area is changing. And we also need to find dC dt, which is how fast the circumference of the circle is changing. So you need to know the equations associated with a circle. So let's draw a picture. So here's a circle. And the radius of the circle is the distance between the center and any point on the circle. The area of the circle is pi r squared. So let's use that to find dA dt. If we differentiate both sides with respect to time, the derivative of a is 1 times dA dt. Pi is a constant, so we don't have to worry about that. The derivative of r squared is 2r times dr dt. So r is 8. 2 times a is 16 dr dt is negative 4. So dA dt is pi times 16 times negative 4, which is basically negative 64 pi. Now what are the units for dA dt? And what are the units for r? Notice that r is in centimeters, and dr dt is centimeters per minute. dA dt therefore has to be centimeters squared per minute. Whenever you're dealing with area, it's always going to be unit squared. If you're dealing with some sort of length or distance, it's just like meters, centimeters, inches, feet. For volume, it's going to be units cubed, like cubic centimeters, cubic feet, and things like that. And also, you could see it in the equation. So we said that the ADT is equal to pi times 2r dr dt. So let's ignore the pi and the 2 because they're constants. r has units centimeters, so that's centimeters over 1, and dr dt has the units centimeters per minute. So if you multiply centimeters by centimeters per minute, centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared over minutes and so that's how you can use dimensional analysis to figure out the missing units. So now let's find the circumference. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So let's find the derivative of both sides. So it's going to be dc dt. 2 pi is a constant. The derivative of r is simply 1 
times dr dt. Now as we plug in, let's plug in the units as well. So dr dt, that's going to be negative 4 but centimeters per minute. So to find the CDT, it's going to be 2 pi times negative 4, which is negative 8 pi. And it's going to have the same units as DRDT. So it's negative 8 pi centimeters per minute. As you can see, there's no other units to multiply centimeters per minute by. So DCDT and DRDT, they have the same units. So since the radius of the circle is decreasing, the circle is getting smaller. Therefore, the ADT is negative. The area is going to decrease as well. And as the area of the circle decreases, the circumference is going to decrease as well. So that's negative. So as you can see, the numbers make sense. Consider this one. The surface area of a snowball decreases at a rate of 6 square feet per hour. How fast is the diameter changing when the radius is 2? So the snowball is going to form a shape of a sphere, which is basically a three-dimensional circle. So here's the radius of the sphere, and the diameter is twice the radius. The diameter is a line that touches one edge of the circle to the other edge, and it passes through the center. Now we know that the radius is 2 feet. The diameter is twice the value of the radius, so it's 4 feet. And we're looking for how fast the diameter is changing. So we're looking for d d d t. Now we know how fast the surface area is changing. It's decreasing at a rate of 6 square feet per hour. So that's dsa dt. Since it's decreasing, it's negative 6. So how can we find the rate of change of the diameter with respect to time? What equation can we use? The surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Now we need to get the surface area in terms of the diameter. We said that the diameter is 2r, so if we solve for the diameter, the radius is d over 2. So we can replace r with d over 2. And it's squared. So after we square it, it's going to be d squared divided by 4. 2 squared is 4. So notice that we can cancel the force. So the surface area is going to be pi times d squared. So now, let's go ahead and take the derivative of both sides. So on the left, it's going to be dsa dt. Pi is a constant. The derivative of d squared is 2d. And it's going to be times d d dt, the rate of change of d with respect to time. So now we just got to plug in. dsa dt is negative 6. d diameter has a value of 4. And now we can solve for the missing variable. So this is negative 6, which is equal to 8 pi times d dt. So if we divide by 8 pi, d dt is going to be negative 6 over 8 pi, which reduces to negative 3 over 4 pi. So that is the answer. So since the surface area is decreasing, the diameter is decreasing. Therefore, dsa dt and dd dt, they're both negative. Now what are the units for dd dt? Diameter is measured in feet because the radius is in feet. And time is in hours, so it's going to be feet per hour. Let's try the square problem. The side length of a square increases at a rate of 3 inches per second. How fast is the area and perimeter of the square changing when the side length is 5? So let's draw a picture. So we have a square. 
And let's say that the side length is x. That means all four sides are x. In terms of x, what is the equation for the area and the perimeter of a square? The area is simply length times width, or x times x, which is x squared. The perimeter is the sum of all four sides, so it's x plus x plus x plus x four times, which is 4x. Now we know that x is 5, and we have the rate at which the side length is increasing. That means dx dt is positive 5. So now let's find da dt first. So if a is equal to x squared, da dt is the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, times dx dt. So it's going to be 2 times 5 times dx dt, which is, <laughs> I wrote 5. dx dt is supposed to be 3. I don't know why I wrote 5. But here it is. So it's 2 times 5 times 3, which is 30. Now, what are the units of da dt? Now, let's go back and let's plug in the units. x is 5, but it's 5 inches. dx dt is 3, but it's 3 inches per second. So what happens if you multiply inches times inches per second? Inches times inches is inches squared. Seconds times 1 is simply seconds. So the final answer for d dt is 30 inches squared per second. Now let's find dp dt, the rate at which the perimeter changes with time. So perimeter is 4x. So dp dt is going to be 4 times the derivative of x, which is 1, times dx dt. So dx dt is 3 inches per second. Multiply that by 4, you should get 12 inches per second. And so that's dp dt with the appropriate units. Since the side length is increasing at 3 inches per second, the square is getting bigger, which means that the area is going to increase and the perimeter is going to increase. So as we can see, dp dt is positive, and da dt is also positive. As the square increases, everything is going to increase, the side length, perimeter, and the area. So that is it for this problem. That's all you got to do to find da dt and dp dt. So here is the spherical balloon problem. This balloon is inflated with gas at a rate of 900 cubic centimeters per minute. How fast is the radius of the balloon changing when the radius is 12? So let's make a list of the information that we have. We have r. Our goal is to find dr dt. And we have the rate of change of the volume. When you see cubic centimeters, that's volume. And then if you see minutes, it tells you it's a rate. It's dv over dt. So dv dt, is it positive or negative? Since we're inflating the balloon with gas, the balloon is going to expand. Its volume is going to increase. So dv dt is positive 900. And r is 12. Now, the next thing that we need to do, once we make a list of all the variables that we have and what we need to find, is we need to write an equation. What equation relates the volume of a sphere to the radius? What equation has volume and radius? The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So let's go ahead and find dv dt. The derivative of v is simply dv dt. 4 over 3 pi is a constant, so we can rewrite it. The derivative of r to the third is 3r squared times dr dt. So we can cancel with 3. And now at this point, we just got to plug in what we have. We know that dv dt is 900. 
Then we have 4 pi. R is 12, but it's squared. And now we could solve for dr dt. To isolate dr dt, let's divide both sides by 4 pi over 12 squared. So it's going to be 900 divided by 4 pi. 12 squared, I'm going to write it as 12 times 12. And all of this is equal to drdc. So let's see how we can simplify it. 900 is 9 times 100. 4, we could break that into 2 and 2. And 12 is 4 times 3. So notice that 3 times 3 equals 9. So we can cancel the 9 and the 3. 100 is basically 4 times 25. So we can cancel one of the 4's. So at this point, there's nothing else that we can cancel. So we're going to have a 25 on top. On the bottom, it's going to be 4 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times the other 4, that's 16. And then times pi. So it's 25 over 16 pi. That is equal to dr dt. Now, what are the units for dr dt? What is it? So here's what you could do. Analyze the dr and dt part. Notice that it's radius over time. So what is the unit for radius? The unit of radius is centimeters, as you can see here. And the unit of time is minutes. So it's simply centimeters per minute. So you can look at the variable and you can tell what the units will be. The sides of a cube are increasing at a rate of 5 centimeters per second. How fast is the surface area and volume increasing when the side length is 10 centimeters? So let's draw a picture. So let's draw a cube. So let's say that the edge of each cube has a side length of x. What is the equation for the volume of the cube and the surface area? If you have a three-dimensional rectangular prism or a cube, the volume is going to be length times width times height, or simply x cubed. What about the surface area? The area of each face is basically the length times the width, which is x times x, or x squared. Now, there's six faces of a cube, so the surface area is 6x squared. Now that we have the equations that we need, let's make a list of all the variables that we have. So we know that x is equal to 10, and dx dt is 5 centimeters per second. That's how fast the edges of the cube are increasing. So now let's go ahead and find how fast the surface area is increasing. So starting with this equation, the derivative is going to be dsa over dt, which is equal to 6 times 2x times dx dt. So x is 5, and dx dt, x is not 5, x is 10. I'm looking at this number. dx dt is 5. So what is 2 times 10? 2 times 10 is 20. 20 times 5 is 100. And 100 times 6 is 600. Now what are the units for dsa dt? So sa is surface area. The units for area is always unit squared. So it's going to be centimeters squared. Now we have time on the bottom. The unit for time in this problem is seconds. So it's centimeters squared per second.
Now let's see how fast the volume is changing. So volume is x cubed. That means dv dt is the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared, times dx dt. So x is this number, which is 10. And dx dt is 5. 10 squared, 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 5 is 500. And 500 times 3 is 1,500, since 5 times 3 is 15. So dv dt is 1,500. Now we need to find the units. The unit for volume is unit cube. If the side length is centimeters, then for volume it's going to be cubic centimeters. And we know dt is measured in seconds, so it's cubic centimeters per second. And it's positive since the volume is increasing. If x is increasing, the surface area and the volume will increase. And next up, the ladder problem. A 13-foot ladder is leaning against a house. So let's use a building. Let's say this is the building. Here's the ground. And here is the ladder. So it forms the right triangle. Now let's define what the letters are. Let's say this is x, y, and let's say l is the length of the ladder instead of z. Now the ladder slides down the wall at a rate of 3 feet per minute. So what does that mean? What variable does that correspond to? Well we know it's a rate, so it's something with dt. Now it slides down the wall. Going down the wall, that's associated with y. So that tells you how fast y is changing with respect to time. So we could say that dy dt is 3 feet per minute. Now is it positive or is it negative? So as the ladder slides down the wall, is y increasing or decreasing? Because y is decreasing, dy dt is negative 3. Now, how fast is the ladder moving away from the base of the wall when the foot of the wall, I mean, when the foot of the ladder is currently five feet from the wall? So, if we want to find out how fast it's moving away from the wall, we're looking for dx dt. So, as the ladder slides down the wall, x will increase. So, dx dt has to be positive. And that's what we're looking for, at least for the first part of the problem. Is multiple parts. Now we know that the length of the ladder is 13 and we know it's currently 5 feet from the wall. That means x is 5. So we're missing y and also dl dt. So let's find y first. Notice that this is the 5, 12, 13 triangle. Remember your special right triangles. But using the equation, you can get the same answer. L squared is x squared plus y squared. So L is 13. X is 5. Let's solve for y. 13 squared is 169. 5 times 5 is 25. 169 minus 25 is 144. And the square root of 144 is 12. So we get the same answer. So now let's find dx dt. Let's take the derivative of both sides. So what is the derivative of l squared? Is it 2l dl dt? The answer is it's not. It's 0. The length of the ladder is not changing. The ladder won't increase or decrease in size. It's going to stay a constant 13 feet. And the derivative of a constant is 0. Even if you were to differentiate l squared, let's say if you got 2l dl dt. Because the length of the ladder is not changing, that means dl dt is 0. It doesn't change with respect to time. So the whole thing on the left side is still going to be 0. Now we know that the derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt, and y squared is 2y dy dt. x and y are variables that are changing, and so 
dx dt and dy dt is not equal to zero. If we divide both sides by two, we can get rid of the coefficients. So negative x dx dt is equal to y dy dt. So x is 5. We're looking for dx dt. y is equal to 12. And dy dt, that's negative 3. 12 times negative 3 is negative 36. And if we divide it by negative 5, we're going to get negative 36 over negative 35. The two negative signs will cancel, so it's simply 36 over 5. Notice that dx dt is positive. As the ladder slides down, y decreases, so dy dt is negative. But as it slides down, it moves to the right, which means that x is increasing, so that's why dx dt is positive. Now what is 36 over 5 as a decimal? This is the same as 35 over 5 plus 1 over 5. 5 goes into 35 7 times, and 1 fifth is 0.2, so dx dt is 7.2. Now what are the units of dx dt? So first, what are the units for dx? If you notice, everything is in feet, so dx has the unit feet. And for dt, time is in minutes. So it's going to be 7.2 feet per minute. That's how fast x is increasing towards the right. Now what about the area of the triangle, the second part of the question? How fast is the area of the triangle changing? So first, let's write an equation for the area of the triangle. The area of a triangle is 1 half the base times height. In this case, the base is x, the height of the triangle is y. So to find dA dt, we need to use the product rule. So let's say if f is equal to 1 half x and g is y. The equation for the product rule, the derivative of fg is going to be f prime g plus fg prime. So basically, you find the derivative of the first part, that's f prime, you keep the second part the same, that's simply g, plus you keep the first part the same, that's f, times the derivative of the second part, g prime. So what is the derivative of f, the first part? The derivative of 1 half x is simply 1 half, but with respect to time, we need to add dx dt. The second part, y, is going to stay the same. Plus, the first part is going to stay the same, that's 1 half x, times the derivative of the second part. The derivative of y is 1 times dy dt. So now let's plug in what we have to find dA dt. So dx dt, which we got in the last problem, we said it was 7.2, or 36 over 5. Let's leave it as 36 over 5 for now. So it's 1 half times 36 over 5 times y, which is 12, plus 1 half times x, which is 5, times dy dt, which is negative 3. All of that is equivalent to dA dt. So now let's simplify what we have. Half of 36 is 18. And 18 times 12, that's 216 divided by 5. That's 43.2. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15 divided by 2. That's negative 7.5. So 43.2 minus 7.5 should give you a final answer of 35.7 for dA dt. So now what are the units for dA dt? The units for dA, which is area, 
it's unit squared. And a unit for length or distance in this problem is feet. So dA is going to be square feet. dT has unit minutes, so it's going to be square feet per minute. So now let's move on to the third part of the problem. How can we find how fast the angle between the ladder and the ground, how fast it's changing? So here's the ground, here's the ladder. The angle between them is this angle, theta. So what equation can we use to relate theta? Now there's many equations that we could use. We could use sine, cosine, or tangent. So perhaps you're familiar with SOHCAHTOA. The SO part means that sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse. CAH stands for cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite of adjacent. So if we wish to use sine, sine theta is going to be equal to the side that's opposite to it, which is y, divided by the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the side across the box, so that's the length of the ladder. In this case, it's L. If we want to use cosine, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent to the angle is x. So this is going to be x over L. And if we wish to use tangent, tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. So it's y divided by x. Now you can get the right answer using each one, but you want to pick one that's easy to work with. For example, if you use tangent, this is y over x. To find the derivative, you're going to have to use a quotient rule. And that's going to be a lot of work, so personally, I would avoid using tangent in this particular case. The reason why you want to use sine or cosine is because L is a constant, and so it's going to be very easy to find the derivative. For example, the derivative of 5x is simply 5. So if you want to differentiate x over L, this is 1 over L times x. 1 over L is a constant, just like 5 is a constant. So the derivative of 1 over L times x is simply 1 over L. So it's easier if we use sine or cosine. I'm going to choose cosine. Actually, let's use sine. Let's begin. So the derivative of sine is cosine theta. And we need to differentiate the inside, the angle of cosine. The derivative of theta is d theta dt. Now, y over l is the same as 1 over l times y. The derivative of a constant times y is the constant times 1, but times dy dt. So as you can see, it's much easier to find how fast the angle is changing using sine or cosine. Avoid the quotient rule if possible. It'll make your life a lot easier. Now, we don't know what cosine theta is equal to. Our goal is to find d theta dt. So right now we can't finish this problem. We gotta find theta somehow. Now we could use sine, cosine, or tangent to find theta. It doesn't matter which one. Let's use sine. Sine theta we said is equal to y divided by l. So if you take the inverse sine on both sides, theta is the inverse sine of y over l. And y is 12, l is 13. So if you type that into the calculator, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Inverse sine 12 over 13, you should get 67.4 degrees, or 67.38. So now we could plug that in into cosine, or better yet, if you plug in cosine 67.38, you're going to get 0.3846. But you don't need the calculator to get cosine theta. You can use SOHCAHTOA. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. It's 5 over 13. X is 5, L is 13. So when you type in cosine 67.38, and when you get 0.3846, if you type in 5 over 13, it's the same answer, 0.3846. So 5 over 13 is a more accurate answer. So let's replace cosine theta with 5 over 13, and let's solve for d theta dt. 
So L is 13, and now we need to look for dy dt. So if we multiply both sides by 13, we could cancel these two. So what we now have is 5 times d theta dt is equal to dy dt. So d theta dt is dy dt divided by 5. And dy dt is negative 3. So it's negative 3 over 5, which is negative 0.6. Now what are the units for d theta dt? How can we figure that out? The angle theta, the standard angle, is radians, and time is minutes. So it should be radians per minute. Gravel is being dumped from a conveyor belt at a rate of 100 cubic feet per minute, forming a conical pile whose base diameter is two times the altitude. How fast is the height changing when the pile is 12 feet high? So how can we do this? So let's draw a picture. So we're going to have the shape of a cone. And here we have a conveyor belt. And gravel is being poured onto this conical pile. So the pile is going to increase in value. Now, how can we find how fast the height is changing? How can we figure that out? So what do we know? The 100 cubic feet per minute, what does that represent? That's dv dt. That's how fast the volume is changing. Remember, cubic feet is always associated with volume. We know that the height is currently 12, and our goal is to find dh dt. Now, what equation do we need to solve this particular problem? So we need an equation that relates volume to height. And the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared times height. Now we don't need the radius in this problem because we don't know what it is, nor do we know what dr dt is. So in that case, somehow we need to get rid of r and replace it with h. So this is the radius of the conical pile, and this represents the height. Now we need to focus on this sentence. The diameter is 2 times the altitude. So d equals 2h. Now remember, diameter is twice the value of the radius. So d equals 2r. So if we divide both sides by 2, we can see that the radius is equivalent to the height. So therefore, we can replace r with h for this particular problem. So h squared times h is h to the third power. So now we could differentiate both sides with respect to t. So dv dt is going to be the constant 1 third times pi, and then times the derivative of h to the third, which is 3h squared, times dh dt. So now we could solve for dh dt. So dv dt, that's 100. And then h, we know it's 12. So we have 1 pi, 1 third pi, times 3, times 12 squared, times dh dt. So the 3's cancel. So we have 100 is equal to pi times 12 squared, times dh dt. So if we divide by 144 pi, it's 100 over this number. And we can reduce it. If we divide both numbers by 2, it's going to be 50 over 72 pi. And if we divide it by 2 again, it's 25 over 36 pi. So this is the answer. This is the value of dh dt. Now the units for dh dt, dh, which is represented with the height, 
its feet, and dt is the unit time, so that's minutes. So it's going to be feet per minute. Now let's say that we have an inverted conical tank and water is leaking out. Now it's leaking out at a rate of 500 cubic centimeters per minute. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can work out this problem. The height of the tank is 24 centimeters, and the radius is 6 centimeters. Now the water level is currently 9 centimeters high. So let's say it's somewhere in this region. How can we find the rate at which water is being poured into the tank? So we want to find dvdt, but we have a dvdt um, value ready, so be careful with this problem. Since the water level is rising, the rate of water that enters into the tank exceeds the rate of water that leaves the tank. Now let's go ahead and get volume in terms of height again, just like we did in the last problem. So we're going to use the volume of a cone, which is one-third pi r squared times the height. Now we need to replace r with h. We don't know what drdt is, but we do know what dhdt is. We have the rate at which the water level is rising. That's dhdt. If we were given drdt, then it would be better to replace h with r and get the volume in terms of r only. But since we don't have drdt, we have dhdt, we want it in terms of h. So how can we write an equation that relates the height and the radius together? Notice that the height is 24 centimeters. That's for the uh, tank. And the radius of the tank is 6 centimeters. So the ratio between height and radius is 4 to 1. Now the water it's going to form the shape of the tank. A liquid always has the shape of its container. So for the water level, the ratio between height and the radius is still going to be the same. It's going to be 4 to 1. So we can write this equation. We could say that h is 4 times the radius. 24 is 4 times 6. If you plug in 6 for the radius, you'll get a height of 24. But now we need to get r in terms of h, so we need to solve for r. So h divided by 4 is equal to the radius. So let's replace r with h divided by 4. So we're going to have h squared divided by 16. And then we can multiply 3 and 16. So the equation is going to be 1 over 48 times pi times h cubed. So now let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. So therefore, dv dt is equal to 1 over 48 times pi times 3h squared times dh dt. Now, we need to understand what dv dt represents. dv dt represents the net rate of the volume of water that enters into the conical pile. So let's say, let's make up some numbers. Let's say if 800 cubic centimeters of water is flowing per minute into the, uh, the tank. And at the same time, 100 cubic centimeters per minute of water is leaking out of the tank. Then the volume is increasing at a rate of 700 per cubic centimeters per minute. 
So in one minute, if you add 800 cubic centimeters of water, and within that same minute, 100 leaks out, the tank, it gains a net of 700 cubic uh, centimeters of water. The VDT represents the 700. It represents the net change of water that flows into it, or the net rate, I should say. So we could say that dVdt represents the rate of volume that flows into the tank minus the rate of volume that flows out of the tank. Now we don't have dVdt yet, so we got to find it. So let's use this equation to get the answer. So dVdt is equal to 1 over 48 times pi times 3 times the height is squared, and the height is 6 centimeters. I mean, not 6, but 9. And the HDT is positive 15. So we can cancel with 3, and this will be 16. So what we have is pi times 9 squared times 15 divided by 16. 9 squared is 81 times 15, that's 1215 over 16, which we can't reduce it. But let's turn it to a decimal. So dVdt is 238.56. Now this includes the pi. So now that we have that, we can use this equation. So let's replace dVdt with this number. And the volume that goes into it is what we're looking for. And the rate of change of the volume that flows out is 500. So we need to add 500 to both sides. So the rate of water that flows into the tank is 738.56 cubic centimeters per minute. Now let's understand what's going on here. So water is being poured into the tank at a rate of 738.56 cubic centimeters per minute. And 500 cubic centimeters per minute of water flows out of the tank. So the tank gains a net of 238.56 cubic centimeters of water every minute. So the water level is still rising. But that's the net gain, which represents dVdt in the equation. But our final answer, which is the rate of water that's being poured into the tank, is 735, I mean 738.56. You need to add these two values to get it. A street light is mounted on a pole 24 feet tall. A man 6 feet tall walks away from the pole at a rate of 4 feet per second. How fast is the tip of his shadow moving when he is 20 feet from the pole? And also, how fast is the length of his shadow changing at this instant? So we need to draw a picture. Let's say this is the pole. And here's the man. He's six feet tall. Now the light is going to shine on him, creating a shadow. So here's the shadow. So over here we have 24 and 6. Let's call this distance x, and let's say this is s. So s is the length of the shadow, and x is the distance between the man and the pole. And let's say l is the distance between the pole and the tip of the shadow. Using this information, how can you figure out the answer to the two questions? Now, here's what you need to know for this question. If you want to find the rate at which the tip of the shadow is moving, you need to look for dl dt. 
Now, if you want to find how fast the length of his shadow is changing, you're looking for dsdt. As long as you understand that, then you can easily solve these problems. So let's begin. Now, what we have is two similar triangles. If we draw the larger triangle, this is 24. And on the bottom, we have x plus s. Now, for the smaller triangle, it's 6 and s. So we can make a ratio. We can set up a proportion between these two triangles. And if you're not sure about how to set up the proportion, notice that these two, they have the same angle theta. So tangent theta for this triangle is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is 24 over x plus s. Now tangent theta for this angle is going to be 6 over s. 6 is opposite, and the s is adjacent to it. So therefore, since tangent theta equals tangent theta, 24 over x plus s equals 6 over s. Now that we set up the proportion, let's cross multiply. 24 times s is 24s. 6 times x plus 6, if we distribute, it's going to be 6x plus 6s. Now let's subtract 6s from both sides. So 24 minus 6 is 18. So 18s is equal to 6x. Now let's get s in terms of x. If we divide both sides by 18, s is 6 over 18, which is 1 third, times x. So we don't need this equation anymore. Now from this equation, we can find how fast the tip of the shadow is moving and also the length of the shadow. But I think it's easier if we answer the second part of the question. Because the rate at which the length of the shadow is changing is dsdt. So if we take the derivative of both sides, dsdt is equal to 1 third dx dt. So dx dt, that is equal to, let's see, 4 feet per second. That's how fast the man is walking away from the 24 foot pole. He's moving at a speed of 4 feet per second. So x is increasing 4 feet every second. So that's dx dt. So in this problem, ds dt is 4 over 3 feet per second. Now that we have the answer to the second part of the question, let's find the answer to the first part. So the rate at which the tip of the shadow is moving is dl dt. And l is basically x plus s. Now we can get l in terms of x because we have the value of s. s is 1 third x. So x plus 1 third x is equal to l. 1 plus a third is basically 3 over 3 plus 1 over 3. So that's uh, 4 over 3. So l is 4 over 3x. So using this, we can find dl dt. dl dt is going to be 4 over 3 dx dt. And dx dt, we know it's 4 feet per second. So 4 times 4 is 16, so the answer is 16 over 3 feet per second. So when you see these questions, if you want to find the length or the rate at which the tip of the shadow is moving, just make sure that you know that you're looking for dl dt. If you want to find out how fast the length of the shadow is moving, find ds dt. If you understand that, then 
these problems won't be that bad. Try this one. A spotlight on the ground shines on a wall 18 meters away. So let's say this is the ground level. And let's say this is the wall. And here is the spotlight. And there's a man who's 2 meters tall. And he's walking towards the building. So he's moving in this direction at a speed of 2 meters per second. Now we know the spotlight is 18 meters from the wall. And the man is 2 meters tall. So the light is going to shine on his head and it's going to hit the wall. So his shadow is on the wall. So S represents the length of the shadow. And he is currently 8 meters from the building. How fast is the length of his shadow on the building changing? when he's 8 meters from the building. So we're looking for DSDT. What can we do to find DSDT? So we need to set up an equation. And we need to use similar triangles to do it, just like we did in the last example. So looking at the large triangle, we know this is S. And 18 is not going to change. So the distance between the spotlight and the building is going to remain 18. The spotlight is not moving and the building is not moving. However, the man is moving. Now, let's say that the distance between the man and the spotlight is y, and the distance between the man and the wall or the building, let's say it's x. So 18 equals x plus y. But now let's draw the smaller triangle, which is this one. For the smaller triangle, this is 2, and this is y. Now y is changing. As the person moves to the right, x is decreasing, so dx dt is negative, but y is increasing, so dy dt is positive. Now what about the shadow on the building? As the person moves to the right, is the length of the shadow increasing or decreasing? So let's say if we draw the person here. Let's make sure that he has the same height. Notice that the length of the shadow decreased. It's now a little bit shorter. So as he walks towards the building, the shadow is going to decrease, so DSTT should be negative for our final answer. Now, let's set up the proportion. If you ever have difficulty setting up the proportion, use the technique that we used in the last example. Find the common angle. The common angle of both triangles is the angle between the spotlight and the ground. We'll call that theta, which is right here. Tangent theta for the triangle on top is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is s over 18. And tangent theta for the other triangle is opposite divided by adjacent, that's 2 over y. Therefore, s over 18 is equal to 2 over y. So now let's cross multiply. If we cross multiply, it's going to be 18 times 2, which is 36, and that's equal to s times y. Now, we don't know what dy dt is, but we do have the value of dx dt. dx dt is the speed at which the person is moving to the right. Actually, now that I think about it, it turns out that we do have dy dt. So I take it back. dy dt and dx dt are the same. One is positive and the other is negative. The reason why is because 
the length between the spotlight and the building is constant. It's 18. So for example, here's y, here's x. Currently, x is 8. That means y has to be 10 if the total length is 18. Now, the person is moving at 2 meters per second. So in one second, x is going to increase by 2 meters. It's going to be 10. And y is going to decrease by 2 meters. It's going to be 8 because the total has to be 18. So we could say that, well, actually, no, I, I did that wrong. X should be decreasing. As the person moves to the right, X is going to be smaller because he's going to be closer to the building. So it's going to decrease by 2 in 1 second. And in 1 second, Y is going to increase by 2 meters, so it's going to be 12. 12 plus 6 is still 18. So DX DT is negative 2 meters per second. And DY DT should be positive 12 meters per second. So let's calculate DS DT using X and Y separately. Let's see if we get the same answer. So let's find the derivative of both sides. The derivative of 36 is 0. To differentiate SY, we need to use the product rule. So if we differentiate the first part, we're going to get ds dt times the second part, which is going to stay the same, plus the first part, which is going to stay the same, times the derivative of the second, which is dy dt. So ds dt, we're looking for that. We don't know what that is currently y is 10 when x is 8. So if x is 8, this has to be 10 because x and y has to add up to 18. Now we need to find the value of s. So we can use this equation to do so. So 36 is equal to s times y. So when y is 10, s has to be 3.6. Starting with this equation, if we solve for s, s is equal to 36 divided by y. And since y is 10, 36 divided by 10 is 3.6. So now we could find ds dt if we plug in dy dt. So we said that dx dt is negative 2 because x is decreasing. So And dy dt is positive 2 because y is increasing at the same rate. So 3.6 times 2 is 7.2. And let's move that to the other side. So we have negative 7.2 is equal to 10 times ds dt. So if we divide both sides by 10, ds dt is equal to negative 0.72 and it's going to be meters per second. So now let's find ds dt another way. So starting with the same equation, 36 is equal to sy. But instead of using a product rule, let's use, let's do something different. Let's solve for s. Now we need to write y in terms of x. We know that x plus y adds up to 18. So if you solve for y, y is 18 minus x. So therefore, we have this equation, s is 36 over 18 minus x. And we can rewrite it. We can move the 18 minus x to the top. So this is equal to 36, 18 minus x raised to the minus 1. So now we can use the power rule. To find ds dt using the power rule, we need to move the negative 1 to the front. So ds dt is going to be equal to negative 36. Next, we need to keep the inside the same. 18 minus x, then subtract the exponent by 1. So this is going to be negative 2 times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 1. So to rewrite it, ds dt, or simply s prime, is going to be negative 36 times negative 1. So that's positive 36. And since the exponent is negative, we're going to move it to the bottom to make it positive. So it's going to be 18 minus x on the bottom squared. And there's one thing we're missing. 
anytime we differentiate x, we need to add dx dt. So let's add it here. So it's 36 divided by 18 minus x. x is 8. So 18 minus 8, that's 10. And then it's squared. And dx dt, this is going to be negative 2 because x is decreasing. So let's type it in. 36 times negative 2, that's negative 72, divided by 10 squared. 10 squared is 100. So negative 72 divided by 100 gives you the same answer, which is negative 0.72. So you can find dx dt using x or y. So in this problem, you just need to realize that dx dt is negative 2 because x is decreasing, but dy dt is positive 2 because it's increasing but they're changing at the same rate. Because the total distance has to be 18, the rate at which x decreases is equal to the rate at which y decreases. Let's try this one. This problem shouldn't be too bad. Two cars are moving starting at the same point. One travels north at 30 miles per hour, and the other travels east at 40 miles per hour. At what rate is the distance between the two cars changing three hours later? So how can we find the answer to this question? So let's say that they start at this point. So one car is traveling north and the other one is traveling east. The distance between the two cars is the hypotenuse of the triangle. So let's say this is x, this is y, and this is z. So the car that's traveling north is going at 30 miles per hour. So that's a rate. That's dy dt. dy dt is 30. And it's positive 30 because y is increasing. dx dt is 40. That's the car that's traveling east. Our goal is to find dz dt. Now we need to find the values of x, y, and z. So x is the distance that the car travels as it goes towards the east. And y is the distance that the first car travels heading north. So let's start with x. How can we find x, y, and z? using a speed. Notice that we have the time. Let's start with x first. If the car is traveling east at 30 miles per hour, what distance will it travel in three hours? Now what does the speed of 30 miles per hour mean? In one hour, what is the distance that the car will travel? If the car is moving at 30 miles per hour in one hour, it's going to travel 30 miles. In two hours, it's going to travel 60 miles. In three hours, 90. Another way you can find the answer is using this equation, d equals rt. Distance is equal to rate times time. The rate is, in this case, 30 miles per hour. So if you multiply it by three hours, notice that the unit hours cancel. And so you get 90 miles. So x is 90. Now what about y? So if the car is moving 40 miles per hour, in one hour it's going to travel 40 miles, two hours, 80 miles, three hours, 120 miles. So all you got to do is 40 multiply by 3. And that's going to give you 120. Now what is the value of z? To find z, you can use the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals z squared, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So what is 90 squared plus 120 squared? And then the square root of that, what is that equal to? Notice that this is associated with the 3, 4, 5 triangle. Or you could say the 30, 40, 50 triangle. If you multiply 30 by 3, you'll get 90. If you multiply 40 by 3, you'll get 120. So 50 times 3 is 150. That tells us that z is 150. 
using the 3, 4, 5 ratio. But you can always use the calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. 90 squared is 8100. And 120 squared is 14,400. When you add them, you should get 22,500. If you take the square root of that, you do indeed get 150. So Z is 150. Now that we have Z, we could find DZ dt. So let's take the derivative of both sides. The derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt. For y squared, it's 2y dy dt. And for z squared, it's 2z dz dt. So if we divide both sides by 2, we can get rid of all the 2s. And now let's plug in what we have. So x is 90 times dx dt, which is 40, plus y, which is 120, times dy dt, and that's 30. And that's equal to z, which is 150, times dz dt, which is the answer that we're looking for. So let's get rid of this, and let's solve it. So what's 90 times 40? 9 times 4 is 36, so we just got to add the two zeros. 12 times 3 is 36, so let's add two zeros. And this is equal to 150 times dz dt. So we have 7200 divided by 150. So we can cancel a zero, so that's 720 over 15. And let's use a calculator at this point. 720 divided by 15 is 48. So dz dt is equal to 48. Let's try this one. At 1 o'clock, ship B is 150 miles east of ship A. Ship A is moving 30 miles per hour north, and ship B is moving 20 miles per hour south. How fast is the distance between the ships changing at 3 o'clock? So notice the time difference between 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So it's two hours later. Now what can we do? The first thing you should do is draw a picture. So B is east of A. That means A is on the west side and B is on the east side. Now the distance between them is 150 miles. That's the horizontal distance. B is moving south at 20 miles per hour. And A is moving north at 30 miles per hour. So every hour, ship A moves 30 miles. So in two hours, it's going to move 60 miles. Ship B moves 20 miles every hour, so in two hours it's going to move 40 miles. So let's draw a picture representing their current position. So the horizontal distance between them is still 150. Now what I'm going to do is take this portion and add it to this side. So A it's going to be 100 miles north of B. At this point, B is over here. So we added 60 and 40. Notice that the horizontal distance between A and B is going to be the same. That's not going to change. Because A is moving north, B is moving south. The vertical distance will change. If A moves 60 miles north, and if B moves 40 miles south, Vertically speaking, they're 100 miles apart along the y-axis. So it helps if you redraw the picture like this. So now let's put some letters in this picture. Let's say the horizontal distance between A and B is L. So L doesn't change. L is constant. Now let's say the distance that B moves is X. And the distance that A moves is Y. So this side, the vertical distance, is going to be x plus y. 
and let's say z is the distance between a and b. So you want to redraw the picture so that it forms a triangle. And the key is to add y and x because the vertical distance between a and b two hours later is the sum of x and y. It's 40 plus 60. If a moves 60 miles north and b moves 40 miles south, they're currently 100 miles away from each other. Once you understand that, now you can finish the problem. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we have the equation a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Let's say a is l. So we have l squared. b is going to be x plus y. So it's x plus y squared. And c is the hypotenuse, which is z squared. So let's make some space. So we know x, x is 40, y is 60. We don't know the value of z. But we do know dx dt, which I'm going to write it as x prime. That is 20 miles per hour. y prime, or dy dt, that's 30 miles per hour. And our goal is to find dz dt. And of course, let us not forget L, which is 150. So now, let's find Z first. Let's plug in the numbers into this equation. So L squared is 150 squared plus X, which is 40, plus Y, which is 60 squared. And that is equal to Z squared. 40 plus 60 is 100. And 100 squared is 10,000. If we add that to 150 squared, you should get 32,500. Then if you take the square root of both sides, you'll see that Z is, if you want the exact answer, is 50 radical 13, which as a decimal, that's 180.28. So now that we have the value of Z, we can now find the derivative. The derivative of L squared, which is a constant, that's going to be 0. Now, the derivative of x plus y squared, we need to use the chain rule. So let's move the exponent to the front. So it's going to be 2. Keep the inside the same, x plus y. Then subtract it by 1. So now the exponent is 1 times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x is dx dt, which is x prime. And for y, it's y prime. And that is equal to the derivative of z squared, which is 2z dz dt, or z prime. Now let's divide both sides by 2. And now let's plug in x plus y, that's 40 plus 60. And then x prime plus y prime. We know dx dt is 20, dy dt is 30. And z, which is 180.28 times z prime. 40 plus 60 is 100. 20 plus 30 is 50. And we need to divide this by 180.28. So 100 times 50 is 5,000, divided by 180.28. So dz dt is 27.73. So that's the final answer to this problem. That is the value of dz dt. That's how fast the distance between the two ships is changing at 3 p.m., or two hours later. Let's work on this one. An airplane at an altitude of 3 miles travels horizontally at 400 miles per hour. It passes directly over a radar station. What is the rate at which the distance between the plane and the radar station is changing when the plane is 6 miles away from the station? So let's say here's the station represented by this box. It's at ground level, and there's a plane that's flying at this point. Now we know that the plane 
is three miles above the radar station. And we want to find a distance when it's six miles away from the station. So it's going to travel some distance horizontally. And the hypotenuse of the triangle form, that's going to be the six miles. So after it travels some distance horizontally, it's going to be six miles away from the radar station. So let's say Z is the hypotenuse. Y is 3. And we need to find X. So we have the equation Z squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. Z is 6, y is 3, so what is the value of x? 6 squared is 36, 3 squared is 9, 36 minus 9 is 27. So x is the square root of 27. 27 is 9 times 3, and the square root of 9 is 3, so x is 3 root 3. Now that we have the value of x, how can we find the ZDT? Now what does the 400 miles per hour represent? The 400 miles per hour is dx dt because the plane is moving horizontally in the direction of x. So starting with this equation x squared plus y squared equals z squared we could find the derivative of both sides. 2x times dx dt will say just x prime plus 2y times y prime. Actually, I take that back. y is a constant. Because the plane is traveling horizontally, the altitude will always be 3. So the derivative of y squared is simply 0. And then it's going to be 2z times z prime. So we could divide both sides by 2. We know that x is 3 root 3 and x prime is dx t which is 400 z is 6 so now we can solve for uh, z prime so it's 3 root 3 times 400 divided by 6 400 is 2 times 200 and 6 is 3 times 2 so we can cancel a 3 and we can cancel a 2 so z prime or dz dt, the rate at which the plane and the distance with the radar station is changing, that's going to be 200 times radical 3, which as a decimal that's 346.4. So that's how fast the distance between a plane and a radar station is changing when the plane is 6 miles away. An airplane travels horizontally at 600 miles per hour at an altitude of 3 miles toward an observer that is currently 10 miles away. How fast is the angle between the ground and the observer's line of sight to the airplane changing at this instant? So let's say if this is the ground level and here we have the observer and let's say this is the airplane and here is the observer's line of sight. So let's turn it into a triangle. Now the airplane is currently 10 miles from the observer and it's traveling at an altitude of 3 miles. And we have the speed of the airplane. So let's call this x. This is going to be y and let's say this is z. Our goal is to find out how fast is the angle between the ground and the observer's line of sight is changing. So we need to find d theta dt. Now we have dx dt. That's how fast the plane is moving. Because the plane is moving towards the observer, x is decreasing. Therefore dx dt is negative 600. Now Which trig function should we use? We need to write an equation with theta. 
if we use cosine, cosine theta is going to be x divided by z. Sine theta is y divided by z. And tangent theta is y divided by x. Which one is the best one to use? We don't want to use cosine because x and z are both variables. We want to use y because y is a constant. It's easier to deal with a constant. For this one, we would have to use the quotient rule if we have to uh, differentiate it. Now, we don't want to use sine theta either because even though y is a constant, we don't have the value for dz dt, so we don't want to use that. Tangent is the best one to use in this case. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, and the derivative of theta is d theta dt. Now we want to differentiate y divided by x. So y is a constant, so it's really y times 1 over x. And for 1 over x, we need to rewrite it as x to the minus 1. The derivative of x to the negative 1 is negative 1 x to the minus 2, which, if you rewrite it, it's going to be negative y over x squared. And let's not forget dx dt. So this is the equation that we have. The only thing we're missing is the value of x and the value of secant theta. So let's find x first. So using the equation x squared plus y squared equals z squared, it's x squared plus 3 squared equals 10 squared. 10 squared is 100, 3 squared is 9, 100 minus 9 is 81. I mean not 81, but 91. So x squared is 91, which we can replace x squared directly with 91 in this case. We don't have to take the square root of x squared. Now let's find out what cosine theta is equal to. So x is root 91 for the triangle. Cosine theta is adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So it's going to be the square root of 91 divided by 10. Now secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Secant theta is 1 divided by cosine. So if cosine theta is root 91 over 10, secant theta is 10 divided by root 91. So now we can plug in everything that we have. So if secant theta is 10 divided by root 91, secant squared is going to be 10 squared, which is 100, divided by root 91 squared, which is simply 91. And then this is times d theta dt. And this is equal to negative y, which is negative 3, divided by x squared. x squared is going to be 91 times dx dt, which is negative 600. So now we could solve for d theta dt. So if we multiply both sides by 91, we could cancel these terms. So we have 100 times d theta dt and that's equal to negative 3 times negative 600. So if we divide both sides by 100, we're going to get the value of d theta. Negative 600 divided by 100 is negative 6. We could cancel the two zeros. So d theta dt is going to be negative 3 times negative 6, which is 18. And so it's going to be 18 radians per hour. Notice that the time is in hours. Since the speed is 600 miles per hour, so dt has to be associated with hours. And the angle is typically associated with radians.
A baseball diamond is a square with side 100 feet. So let's draw a picture. A batter hits the ball and runs towards first base. So this is the home plate. Here's first base, second base, third base. And he's heading towards first base with a speed of 20 feet per second. At what rate is his distance from second base changing when he is 30 feet from first base? So we know the side length is 100 feet. So he's somewhere at this point right now. So if he's 30 feet from first base, that means that he's 70 feet from the home plate. So now if we were to draw a triangle, we want to find the rate at which his distance from second base is changing when he's 30 feet from first base. So this is the triangle that we want to draw. And because it's a square, this triangle is the right triangle. So let's say that this distance is x, this is y, and this is z. So we know that x is 30, y is 100, and we got to find z. Using the equation x squared plus y squared equals z squared, we have 30 squared plus 100 squared is equal to z squared. 100 squared is 10,000, and 30 squared is only 900. So the square root of that result is going to be 104.4. So now that we have z, we could find dz dt. So starting with this equation, let's go ahead and use implicit differentiation. Let's differentiate both sides with respect to time. The derivative of x squared is 2x times dx dt, which we can write as x prime. Now y is a constant. As the runner, as the batter runs towards the first base, y is not going to change. It's going to remain 100. The derivative of a constant is 0. And the derivative of z squared is 2z, z prime. So we can divide both sides by 2. And now we just got to plug in. So x is 30. dx dt, is it positive 20 or negative 20? Now notice that x is decreasing. As he runs towards first base, x is going to get smaller and smaller. So dx dt, or x prime, is negative 20 since x is decreasing z is 104.4 so z prime is going to be 30 times negative 20 divided by 104.4 so z prime which is the z dt is negative 5.75 and a unit is going to be feet per second And what about the second part? How fast is his distance changing from the home plate if he's halfway from the first base running towards the second base? What would you do to answer that? So let's redraw this diagram. So he's currently halfway from first base and he's traveling this way so he's between first base and second base and we want to find out how fast the distance is changing from where he is and home plate which is over here so if we draw a line this is the new z value and this is the hypotenuse of the right triangle so let's say that This is x, and this is y. So y is going to remain 100. x is no longer 30. If he's halfway between the first base and second base, that means x is 50, which is half of 100. 
and z is going to be different. So we have to recalculate z. So let's go ahead and do that. So x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. x is 50, y is 100. We know that 100 squared is 10,000. 50 squared is 2,500. So when you add them, you get 12,500. And if you take the square root, it's going to be 50 root 5, which is 111.8. So now that we have the value of z, we could find dz dt, which is what we're looking for. That's how fast the distance between the home plate and where he is is changing. Now we're going to assume that the speed is still 20 feet per second. Let's assume that his speed is constant. I didn't mention it for the second problem, but it's understood that it's going to be the same. At least it should be the same if it's not specified that the speed is different. So we're going to have 2x times x prime. y is a constant, so the derivative of y squared is still 0. And then 2z, z prime. So just like before, we're going to divide by 2. x is 50. Now, x prime, is it positive 20 or negative 20? Notice that the way we drew it, x is increasing. As he moves towards second base, this part of the triangle is going to get bigger. So instead of plugging negative 20, we need to plug in positive 20. z is equal to 111.8. So let's solve for z prime. So it's going to be 50 times 20, which is 1,000, divided by 111.8. So dz dt is 8.945 feet per second. So for this problem, we have a trough that contains isosceles triangles. So let's draw it. So here is the length of the trough. It's 12 feet and it's four feet wide and it has a height of two feet. Now it's filled with water. And the water level is currently one feet high. How fast is the water level changing when the water is one feet deep? How can we figure this out? So our goal is to find dh dt. So the height of the water is currently one feet. And what is the equation for the volume of this trough? The volume of the trough is one half the length times the width times the height. The length of the trough will always be 12 feet, no matter how deep the water is. So L is constant. So it's 1 half times 12 times WH. Now notice that the width is twice the value of the height. So we could say that W is equal to 2H. So we can replace W with 2H. So now we have the volume in terms of H. And we can cancel the 2 with the 1 half. So V is equal to 12 H squared. So now if we take the derivative of both sides, we'll see that the V dt is equal to 12 times 2H times dH dt. Now we have the value of dV dt. The water is being poured into the trough at 36 cubic feet per minute. So the volume is increasing, so it's positive 36. And the height is currently 1. So now we could solve for dh dt. 
If we divide both sides by 12, 36 divided by 12 is 3. So we have 3 is equal to 2 times dHdt. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So the height is changing at 1.5 feet per minute. That's how much, that's how fast the water level is increasing as water is being poured into the trough. So that's dHdt. It's positive 1.5 feet per minute.